Okay, this video can possibly save your GPA if you are taking a Cal 1 class at a university. How to prove limits with the epsilon delta definition. The first example is a linear situation. Check this out. I would recommend you guys to always write down the PF because your professor will be really happy when he or she sees the PF, which stands for proof, right? Trust me on that. And then you go ahead and write down given, choose, suppose, and check, right? With this format, right? And then you have to remember what to write down. First, when you are doing the epsilon delta definition of a limit, you always start with given epsilon is greater than zero, and that's exactly what I have on my shirt. And then you say, choose delta to be something. This right here should be based on epsilon, but unfortunately we don't know what it is at the moment. It's okay. Just go ahead and leave it blank for now and move on. A lot of students, they get stuck right here and they don't know what to continue. That's bad. Seriously, it's okay. Just leave it blank for now. And then you continue right here. You say, suppose the absolute value of this minus that, namely the distance between x and 2, right? So you just go ahead and write down x minus 2. But for the definition of a limit, you don't need to have x to be exactly equal to 2. So you say this right here is greater than 0 when you look at it backwards. In the meantime, you say this right here is less than delta. As you can see, we finished three steps already. This, this, and that. Well, almost, I should say, two and a half steps, right? And then you say, you check the absolute value of the function minus the limit. So we write down 3x plus 1 and then minus 7. And you hope to show that this absolute value is less than epsilon at the end. Okay, so that's the, what we can do. Of course, do some algebra. So here, we will have 3x, this and that is just minus 6, and then we can factor out the 3. So this right here becomes 3 absolute value of x minus 2. Have a look, you see that this right here, the absolute value of x minus 2, is exactly less than delta. So we can replace this with uh, less than. The 3 is still 3, but this guy becomes delta. In the end, you want to make sure that this turns out to be just an epsilon. Now, you have to ask yourself, 3 times what will be epsilon? Well, we know that 3 times epsilon over 3 will be epsilon because the 3 will cancel out. So that means you just have to make epsilon, you just have to make delta equal to epsilon over 3. That's it. Therefore, you come back here and just write down epsilon over 3. Guess what? We are done. And this is how you casually prove a limit with the epsilon delta definition. Now, let's move on to example number two. Here we have the limit as x approaching 5, square root of 2x plus 6, and that's equal to 4. Well, to figure out the 4, we can just put a 5 in here and work that out. This is pretty easy because this is continuous, right? But to talk about the proof, be sure you follow this format. Here we go. You always say, given epsilon is greater than 0, and then you want to say, choose delta is equal to something that's based on epsilon. But you don't know yet, it's okay. Just leave it blank for now. And then you continue by saying, we are going to suppose the absolute value of this minus that, which is x minus 5. And then you want to make this greater than 0, and you make this less than delta, and in the end, you want to check the absolute value of the function minus the limit. So we have the square root of 2x plus 6, and then minus 4 right here. Hopefully, we can see that this right here is going to be less than epsilon at the end. And now, we just have to think about what algebra we can do and what delta we really have to choose. That's the idea. Well, here we have two terms and we have a square root, so it's a good idea to multiply this and the bottom by its conjugate. When you do that, you will see this part will pop out. Let me show you. So, this right here is equal to the absolute value. Here we have the square root of 2x plus 6 and then minus 4, but I will multiply it by its conjugate, which is the square root of 2x plus 6 and then plus 4. And of course, we do the same thing on the bottom. So divided by this guy, square root of 2x plus 6, and then plus 4, like so. And for the top, 
When you multiply this and that, you will just get this thing squared, which we get 2x plus 6. And then we are going to minus this thing squared, which is going to be 4 squared, which is 16. And then this minus that is just going to be minus 10. So on all, the top is just 2x minus 10. Yeah? And what else can we do? Yes, we can factor out 2 on the top, right? So have a look. When we factor out 2 on the top, we will live with absolute value, and then we have x minus 5. And the 2 is also the absolute value because 2 is positive. Huh? And then you see on the bottom, the output of the square root is never negative, and if you add 4 to it, it's always positive. So the absolute value of the bottom doesn't matter. You can just write yes, this is over. Here we have the square root of 2x plus 6, and then plus 4, like so. Yeah? Well, well, well. What else can we do? Do not multiply by this conjugate again. <laughs> Here is the deal. The output of the square root is always positive, and we want to kind of get rid of this. Yeah? Well, if the bottom, here we are adding this positive thing. This right here is going to be less than, right? This is going to be less than, here we have the 2 absolute value of x minus 5 over, if you just ignore the square root part, just put it as over 4. Why? Just take a look right here, right? Suppose you have, let's say, 1 over 1 plus 4 versus 1 over 4. Which one's bigger? This one is going to be bigger. Why? Because you just ignore this part. 1 over 5 is less than 1 over 4. Because this is positive, so this inequality is true. And if you want to make it clear why this inequality is true, you can say that because, BC stands for because, you can say that because the square root of 2x plus 6 is always greater than or equal to 0. And technically, you should put this down as a less than or equal to because sometimes this might be equal to 0. So just go ahead and put down down right here. So that's the idea. Yeah? So, you see, you can get rid of the square root part, so you don't have to look at this part with x anymore. That's what you have. And of course, we can reduce this. This is just 1, this is 2. So this is equal to 1 over 2, and we have the absolute value of x minus 5. Yeah? So that's what we have. In the end, you see, this guy is less than delta. So we know this is less than 1 half delta. But we do want to make this epsilon at the very end. So in our case, what should delta be? Well, here we have 1 half already, but if delta is equal to 2 times epsilon, you see that the 2 and 1 half will cancel out, it will end up with epsilon. So delta should really be 2 epsilon in this case, we we'll come back here and then just put down 2 epsilon, and then we are done. Magic. <laughs>